My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Well, during this 10 minutes of prayer, you might hear in the background seagulls because outside my window there are always piles of seagulls fly, flying around looking for food, fighting with each other, um, squabbling in general. They start very early in the morning before sunrise and they go on all day until night time. And they wake you up in the morning and they won't let you get to sleep at night time. They are frankly what we call a pest. Um, always pestering, pestering one another and pestering the preacher. And uh, so listen out for them in the background. They may just make an appearance. And if they do, all the better, because today's gospel is about being a pest. Where Jesus, you seem to be asking us to become pests, to pester you. Not pester you like seagulls, just making silly noises all day long, but to pester you like human beings, like children of God, who pester their Father in heaven, asking for things that they need, or at least that they want. We may not need them, they may not even be very good for us, but still, Jesus says, pester, be a pest. And so in today's Gospel, it's a long longish gospel and it's about that widow jesus tells the story about the widow coming to a judge an unjust judge not even a just judge and pestering the judge until he finally gets fed up just sim simply as as jesus says in the story since she keeps pestering me i must give this widow her just rights or she will persist in coming and worry me to death. And Jesus tells this story, we're told in the Gospel, that he told that parable about the need to pray continually and never lose heart. So you see that our Lord is telling us, pray, don't give up, don't lose heart. Be like that widow in the Gospel story that Jesus tells us. Cry out, he says, day and night, even when God delays to help you. We see it in other scenes of the Gospel actually. Different people who approach Jesus or in one case only approach the Apostles. If you remember the Syrophoenician woman whose daughter is possessed and she comes and, and she can't get to Jesus but she is pestering the Apostles and pestering them so much that they actually go and beg Jesus to give this woman what she wants because she has become such a pest. And after a little bit of a dialogue between Jesus and the Syrophoenician woman, she gets the cure of her daughter. There's the other fellow, Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, and he's a real pest. Remember, he sits at the gate of Jericho when he hears Jesus is passing by. He shouts out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And people are embarrassed by him. Does he give up? No, he shouts, we're told, all the louder. He's a real pest. And for that reason, he has that prayer answered. He's brought up to our Lord, and our Lord gives him his sight back. Or the third example is Jairus, the father of the very sick girl. The girl who even dies, actually, before uh, Jairus manages to bring Jesus to his house. But he's another guy, a very insistent prayer, he doesn't give up. He wants more than anything in the world that his daughter will be cured. Bartimaeus probably wants more than anything in the world to get his sight back. And the Syrophoenician wants more than anything in the world the cure of her poor daughter. So let's ask our Lord with that kind of faith. And he talks about faith in today's Gospel asking well will there be faith in the world and let's pray for things and not to worry too much whether what we're praying for is is the right thing 
I, I had a fellow years ago who used to ask me quite regularly he used to ask me for different petitions three different things and, um, and one of them was that girls would fall in love with him so this was one of his th three petitions that he, he wanted me to pray for especially and, and I'm sure he was praying for this the whole time that, uh, that girls would just see him and just fall in love with him now was it a good prayer well it was what he wanted and God would either do one of three things I suppose either make all girls fall in love with him helplessly once they saw him or maybe a better thing make one special girl fall in love with him that maybe she would become his wife but if not that something even better better than all the rest that he would fall in love with God and so when he was praying that really perhaps what he was really praying for was that he himself would fall in love with God so God will give us either what we want or he will give us something better but no prayer goes unanswered so pray pray for what you want and even if it's a bit silly pray for it knowing well maybe what I'm praying for is a bit silly but if God doesn't give this to me he will give me something better but he will not allow my prayer to go unanswered but one of the things Jesus says there is persist even when God delays in giving it to us the gospel says will not God see justice done to his chosen who cry to him day and night even when he delays to help them so don't give up don't give up I would say that far too often we just give up too quickly instead of praying continuing and if our Lord has us delaying praying much longer than we expected fine As a, I'll tell you a little story about myself when I was a young child about I suppose about seven years old and I had lost a shoe just one not the two of them and so I remember very distinctly going around with this one shoe on around the house and um, there didn't seem to be anybody else there at the time and I was quite quite kind of worked up about my missing shoe and I was crying and I was praying and I was saying God give me my shoe back and uh, and I wasn't getting it and I remember then actually I got so worked up about it that I was crying and I sat down in my kind of desperation I sat down on the stairs uh, with my one shoe on one foot without, no, without any shoe and I sat there on the stairs and from there uh, probably from no other angle could I see it there was there was the shoe under a table probably brought in there by our dog and it's funny because thinking back God had to make me sit down on those stairs before I could see the shoe no other angle would would I have seen the shoe so there's a, a little a little lesson you know, let's keep praying and know God is up to something in making us keeping us waiting he's, he knows what he's doing cry out to him day and night like those seagulls even when our Lord appears to delay to help us he certainly is hearing he's listening to, the, to, to those prayers of ours so be a pest wear God out he wants that he knows and perhaps only he knows why he's leaving you waiting and perhaps we won't get the thing. Maybe I would have never got my shoe back. But, but certainly, it was something that St. Rosemaria said that the prayers of the sick, the prayers of priests, and the prayers of children are very powerful before God. So we pray, wearing God out, pestering him, knowing that sooner or later we'll either get what we wanted or we'll get something much better, something that we didn't realize at the time that we needed so much. Let's ask Our Lady to help us persevere in prayer. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.